what do you think needs to be done on the food fortification front? Do you think there needs to be a better case that's made? Are there sort of steps that you think need to be taken by the development community to sort of raise the profile? Yeah, you know, it's, it's very interesting because you allude to food fortification being one of those invisible interventions that sort of writ large the problem of nutrition. I think in the public mind, from the family to the national decision maker to global decision makers, that's one of the big problems is that malnutrition is that emaciated child who's in desperate need of treatment for severe acute malnutrition. And we know that's just the tip of the iceberg. So much of the nutritional problem is invisible. And you know, you and I are from the US, but much of Western Europe, much of North America resolve micronutrient deficiencies by food fortification. Almost everything we buy has essential vitamins and minerals. So, but we don't know about it because it's invisible. It doesn't taste the, the change the taste. It doesn't taste the color of the foods. So I think there are a few things. One, it needs to be just common practice. There needs to be better data to drive which foods should be fortified, so which foods are being consumed by the people most at risk, and so how do we get the right vitamins and minerals into those foods. Have mandatory regulatory environments because you need to work with the, the, the uh, local companies that are making these foods, but they're the first ones to ask for a level playing field. So you need to give them a level playing field. You need to have the government setting the standards from a public health perspective of what's the right level of these vitamins and minerals given the consumption patterns. Engage with the public, the private sector because they actually do it, but then make sure the private sector is ensuring the quality and that the public sector is doing the right quality control.